Okay, let's do this. Join the team. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at Beetle and Grimm's brand new and first board game. Now, if you're interested in how to play this game, you want to uh, understand the mechanics, the strategies, you can find all of that in a video that I've already done, where we did a deep dive on the prototype edition of this game. All of that stuff still holds true. So you can check out that video if you really want to see the how to play and dive into the mechanics of how this game is designed. What we're going to do today is we're going to show the Kickstarter production delivery of this game. They did two versions of it. They did the st what, what's kind of referred to as the standard retail release, which is this box right here. A little bit of a different design, a little bit of a smaller, a slimmer box. And then they have this box here, which is the Platinum Edition of the board game. And if you are going to get this game for the price difference, I would highly recommend just going and getting the Platinum Edition. There's not a lot of difference between the price of these. You know, this one's like... Well, I'm not going to get into prices because the prices are all over the place depending on like where you actually get this game. Because it will filter into retail, so any of your third-party type sites... Could, could have this very different than what like an MSRP price would be. So you're, you're not going to find a ton of difference between these two offerings, but your Platinum Edition comes with a sick box. The box is way cooler. It's got all this awesome artwork all over it, and it also comes with miniatures where you're going to have standees here in this edition. But from... You know, we'll, we'll, we're going to get into these. We're going to look at the components. We're going to look at the full production quality of the game. There are some differences, I believe, in like some of the maps and whatnot, the sizes of them. But uh, we're going to get into all that. Okay. The other thing you'll find here on the table was a little uh, augmented reality pin they offered as part of the Kickstarter. It was really the only thing. Well, they had other little, I think, T-shirts and things. Maybe you could have bought as well, but. They didn't really do a um, Kickstarter version of the game. If you go and you just buy the Platinum Edition in your st in a local store, you'll get any everything that you know would have come if you would have backed it on the Kickstarter. They didn't really do the Kickstarter editions or extra little bits that are, are within. And sometimes that's the way to go, keep the price under control, and be able to cleanly manufacture the stuff on time. And they were absolutely able to do that. Um, th this was actually a really, really well executed Kickstarter, all the way from backing to, to delivery, I think, and, and the timing that they that they actually promised. So all that was perfect. If you did back, I think with a certain period, you got this little pin. It's not that big of a deal. I I'll just be honest from from a review perspective. If you got it or you didn't get it, it is a very nice pin, and that's really what I would use it for. But it does have a little app you can download. It's not a Beetle and Grimm thing. It's just uh, you know somebody they partnered with. You can download a little app. You can scan it. And then the little pin sort of comes to life. A little eyeball in the center will sort of move and look around. And it's it puts all the different sort of, we'll say, factions kind of around the pin. And then you can click on them and they'll you can get some audio. Uh, I actually couldn't get the audio to work. It, it actually didn't even work. So um, that may have just been something I was doing, or maybe the app had a bug or something. I, I, I don't know. It's not really that big of a deal to me. Um, the pin is very, very cool, and that's primarily what people are probably going to end up using this for, is just having a really high-quality, heavy-duty pin. All right? That goes right with the game. Okay, let's get into the actual boxes, um, and we're going to do a review. I'm really excited about this. I saw this at... We're going to open the standard first, right? Save the best for last. Where I saw this at Gen Con, uh, they had it out. They were not selling it, okay? They um, they did not sell it before they got it shipped out to the Kickstarter backers. So it was not being sold at Gen Con, but they did have copies of it at Gen Con. Uh, I will mention both of these copies were given to the channel for review. Um, I do have mine's open. I backed the Kickstarter, so I have another one of of these, which I've been obviously playing um, because it was a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal game. So I have my Kickstarter version, but I was given these two uh, specifically for uh, review. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got our book right on the top, Ring of Chaos. This looks really nice. Okay, let's see. And we're just going to take a quick... You'll, you'll see a lot of side-by-side -side bear, uh, bear work here with the side-by-side -side cam um, as we go through this stuff. Okay, book looks good. Spacing looks good. Fonts... This 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 looks nice, right? And and I wouldn't expect anything different. I mean, these guys have been creating really well put together products for years and years and years. Uh, with uh, uh, you might be able to see them over here with all of their um, box sets they do, which we've covered pretty much every one of them on the channel. So if you want to check those out, um, you can find those on the channel as well. I'll probably put a um, probably put one of those uh, playlists attached here at some point during the video where you'll be able to see all Beetle and Grimm videos that the channel's done. We've got quite a few of them. Okay, this looks really good. I like how this is laid out um, and how it goes through the rules, playing the game, taking damage. Yeah, good, set up. All right, rule book looks good. I'm going to put that right out front. Here's the maps. I was really wanting to get into this to see how this worked out. So, okay, double-sided, really nice, high quality. These these look really good. Okay, that turned out nice. Um, let's get into this package here. Open that up. And, ooh, break the seal. Oh, and seal. All right. Then you got each one of your player mats. Uh, they did do a nice little backing. Not needed, but that was a nice little touch to put the Ring of Chaos there. And it actually has the artwork I think that is the artwork, right? Yeah, so the artwork that's on the Platinum Edition box is actually ghosted kind of into the back of this. So that was a nice kind of re reuse of that artwork. So you do get it even in the standard product. It's on the back here. These are going to be kind of your mats that you'll use as a player. But these are nice, like, high quality. They feel like those... Um, I don't know that you can... I'm going to say it's not the stuff you can do dry erase on because most of their other stuff is not designed that way, but it feels and looks like it is. So it's not. That's where we're going to start. Uh, you can correct me in the comments if it is, but uh, this is like that type of material. Okay, It's very thick. It's got sort of that coating. Really well done. I'm glad they, they went. I'm glad they went with that. Okay? Uh, versus just paper. And then you've got your little acrylic stand-ups. Now, these stand-ups are actually better than what I thought uh, we would end up getting. So, let me see. So, you got little acrylic bases. Okay, different colors based on, you know, the, the we'll say the faction that you choose. And we've got these acrylic standees. Uh, and they do look really good. I mean... They are not double-sided, so that is something to call out. They are only single-sided, which means, you know, you got the front side of the, and you'll see it on the side-by-side, -side, you get the front side of the model, you flip it over, you have the front side of the model. So it is not a double-sided acrylic where you get the front and the back. Looks like they did not uh, choose to do that. Now, the next thing uh, I'll have to do, and that may make a difference based on... Uh, which model it is, but I will tell you, these are pretty tight. So let me make sure. Uh, let's grab like a green one here, and let's grab this guy again. Yeah, these are pretty tight. Okay, I'm 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 actually not able to get that in. I mean, I I could, but I'm really gonna have to. St it's not gonna break. It's not going to break. They're just, they are very tight. So that is something to know. And and then we can snap it in. And it's in. Okay? And snapped in. So they're just, they're really tight. So just know that. They're not going to slip. You know, there, there's pros and cons there with the fittings on these things. Because, uh, and, and again, this, now we're getting into board game components. There's pros and cons to this. When you have these really tight fittings... Once you get it in there and you, you want to get it in there just square, then you want to hold it down on the table and then give it that push and snap it in. And you want to stay straight because if you don't, 
you're going to snap it off when you go to the side. But what's nice about having these tighter fittings is then the stuff doesn't come out. There's nothing worse about these little acrylic standees when you put them down and then every time you go to pick it up to move it, it slips out of its base. And I don't know how many companies make them and they end up being like that and then they slip out of the base. But from a review perspective, and to be fair, these are a little tight. So this is something to know, okay? Uh, and that might be a manufacturing thing. It might literally just be the version that I have or uh, like a millimeter too tight. I don't know. But they're, they're going in, as you can see, but you're going to have to push them a little bit. All right, something to know from a review perspective. Now we're going to hit the cards. All right, getting into the cards. Cards look good. Card stock is good. That's perfect. Print looks good. Okay, print looks print looks pretty good. I, I think the prints I think the print is is perfect. I actually like the style um, of the print as well. It it really gives you a kind of a classic RPG feel. Um, those look those look literally good. We got Grim, our friend Grim. That's so awesome. Okay, all right. The cards look good. All right, cards are good. And then you're going to have uh, a couple of these right here, which is going to be your actual cards that you're going to play with when you play the game. And we will open that one. So here's going to be the, flip this over here. Um, these are all going to be what, like the, the kind of like the, the different um, actions that you'll have when, when you play as a player. So parry dominance leadership temple guardian yeah these are really these are really cool these turned out nice okay same card quality on those i love the printing on the back they've done everything really well so far i mean it's it's very it, it definitely got productionalized uh very well uh, i don't have any problems so far uh, other than this right here could have been a little bit better as they, they could have been double-sided front and back and they could have fit a little bit better. But you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really going to gripe for the, for the price of what you'll be able to get this for uh, third, third party. Um, and the game is just so damn fun that um, you know, I'm not really going to hold that against the, the review of the overall quality of the, of the product. Okay. All right. Then we got our, our items here. This is our item deck. Should be the entire thing is all. Yeah, this is our entire item deck. So we'll have all the items that you're able to get. And it's all the classic stuff, right? Your swords, your daggers, your throwing axes, your holy strikes. There's going to be spells and attacks in here as well. Uh, you got some resurrections, the potions, healing potions, necromancy, mind control. Going to get all that too. So that all looks really good. Okay, and now for the final component that I've been... So looking forward to, and how they would productionalize it, is the actual Ring of Ring of Chaos, which will start the game there uh, in the center, and you'll, you'll be going after that ring and trying to hold on and acquire that ring over the course of the game. They did a really good job. I mean, it's, any like, it, it's anything like Beetle and Grimm's, you know, nice pieces of little jewelry that they put inside of their RPG box sets. Uh, this is very similar uh, it's a nice thick piece of metal. It's got sculpting and braiding all the way around it. It's got a really nice little red, um, you know, stone there kind of in the center of it. It looks really good. Uh, I'm not sure what size it is, uh, but it fits, kind of fits my middle finger there. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, oh, I can even get it on my, I can get it on my thumb. So it's a, it's a larger, it's definitely a larger, definitely a larger ring. Um, but you know, you could wear this if it, uh, really fit one of your fingers. Well, <laughs> a little piece of jewelry, uh, as well, if you get the game. So that's all the components that you find. There is a plastic insert. It's kind of your, uh, standard plastic board game insert. However, one thing, nice little touch they did is they kind of branded the Beetle and Grimm's name into the insert. So it's obviously not just some generic insert, which a lot of board games do use just these generic inserts. They've actually got their brand branded right on it which is which is which is cool i think that's uh that's a nice little touch outside of that it is your standard quality of those of those black plastic uh inserts okay that is the standard edition of the game um and now we will get into the 
Platinum edition of the game over here. We'll come back to that. Bear might have to block you a little bit, but it's all right. Okay, we're now into the Platinum edition. Um, this one you will find will have uh, more on the map side, and it will also have the miniatures. So I'm just going to put this up over here, get this out of the way. Okay, same kind of design here. We've got the Ring of Chaos book. That, that's going to be identical. Uh, well, you know what? Um, th I think it's identical. Okay, other than the items that are listed, that might be different. Okay, but for the most part, your book's going to be identical. Here's going to be your uh, boards. So, two boards here and significantly different in the quality. So, again, here our board um, was double-sided. And we had this one here, uh, and it's made of the same material as our mat, our player mat. Here, you're getting a full-scale, like, board game player board, and it is significantly larger. Now, it isn't different from the perspective of, you know, what what's on it, okay? It isn't different from, like, like this map is this map, and you'll see, like, that's not going to affect gameplay, like... It isn't like you have more spots to run to or do. It's just this is a much more expanded version of this map. So this is more of like I have a tiny little space to play. It, it's more miniaturized. Okay. This is maybe I have a little bit of a bigger. And this is not that big. It's like a standard board game size. But now it's just a little bit bigger. And I think the play experience. Again, I, I think the play experience is probably a little bit better on this because it, it is bigger. Um, for I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't affect that much from, like, seeing the strategy or seeing the moves, but it's hard to, it's hard to explain. Playing on this larger board, I think, is a better overall experience. Thus, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But again... I think after you see these boards and you see the miniatures, the price difference that you're going to find between this version of the game and this version of the game, this is where you're going to want to be. Okay, This is where you're going to want to be. And you're getting a lot more options as well. This is a double-sided map. You do get the two maps. You come here, you need four maps. These are double-sided. Okay, so you are getting some different, you are getting some different stuff. We got another map here. I love the colors on this. Looks so good. It's got such a cool theme to it and look. And you can see it's just it's a completely different design too. Because every every one of these that's a little bit of a different design, a different number of circles, where the ring actually starts and is placed, will all uh, change the flow of the game and the strategy that you're after when you're all playing. So, um, just incredible. Here's that green one. We have the green one on the back side of this. Okay, so you are getting two completely new and different maps. If you go this route, we're not going to open this. It's just the same thing as we've already seen here. This is identical. Um, same thing here. Okay, we've got the uh, the deck, the first deck of cards that we opened. And then you've got uh, the two packs of, of items and the cards you'll use as a player, right? All, all the same as what you're going get, to get there. Your bases are in the ring. The ring is going to be exactly the same as well. Um, let's just, well, yes, it's, a, it's identical. The ring is exactly the same. There's no difference there. So you got that. And then you do have uh, the little rubber kind of snap-on bases. A little bit different, right, than what you're going to get here. And then you've got the models and the models really are fantastic it this is one of the things where it, it this would have been a make or, make or break for me from a review perspective um, because doing the sculpts and creating the models and it, th this is all new for beetle and grimms like creating a board game like this and them coming up with their own models not models that are being produced by another company uh, or reused by another company, these are, this is their thing. So you'll see these models on the side by side. I'll have a number of them out. But they do look really good. And I, and I like the fact that they did it 
they gave it the treatment beyond the standard gray plastic. Now, if you're a painter, you might be like, oh, but I wanted to paint them. And, and if you're a painter, obviously this is going to make, you're not going to paint over what's here. You're going to have to strip them down and start over, which is not that big of a deal. If you're a painter, you can strip these down easily. It's not that big of a deal. If you really want to hand paint your game, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I think this is kind of a cool aesthetic. It looks good. They, they look like game pieces, but yet they have that flair and that flavor and that character that's kind of sculpted and built in. Um, and they look really good. They have a high level of detail. I love the level of detail. It's perfect. And and then they, they, they got sort of that wash put on them that then provides uh, all that detail to pop and it makes it look, you know, kind of a step above just your standard... I love this model here. It's a great one. Just your your standard uh, gray plastic miniature, right? So it it really does give you a just a nicer feel and look when it's out on the table. Now, the only other thing that I'll call out um, is you do get the uh, two uh, sculpts per each one of the different types that you can play. So here's like the dragon. You get the two. You get two of the two of the dragon, and then you'll get uh, two. You know, it's picked as one of the models within, we'll say, the faction that you're playing. Uh, you'll get one of those characters is basically is basically sculpted out, and you you get the model. Now, oddly enough, um, I'm not sure why Beetle and Grim were not sculpted. Like the actual Beetle and Grim character, and they are both in this, are not actually uh, sculpted as sculpted characters i'm not i'm not sure why maybe maybe they'll have expansions in the future with with miniatures that you can add on or 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 something i'm not i'm not sure but uh they're they're not here so if you if you were really looking forward to getting that beetle and grim sculpt you're not going to get that so for example the giant slayers uh faction that you can play has one two three four uh, art models. Okay, you've got Beetle, you've got Grim, you got Atasak. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. And Yur. And of those four, they chose to represent that Giant Slayer faction with the Atasak. <laughs> now, could they release in the future more miniature packs as expansions? And maybe Beetle and Grimm find their way into that. That's possibility. I don't know if they're going to do that, but it's totally a possibility that can be built upon. Uh, but but there but if you're really looking forward to that, getting that Beetle or that Grimm sculpt, it's not going to be here. If you can get your hands on the new Ring of Chaos from Beetle and Grimm's, I highly highly recommend it. Go watch the other video where we go over kind of the deep dive of the mechanics and how to play. But they really did nail it overall. They nailed the production quality of this game. The Platinum Edition is phenomenal. Even a full MSRP price of the Platinum Edition is a good price for what you get and the quality of what you get, but you will be able to find this lower than MSRP out there on third-party sites. Uh, if, you're, if, you're not, if you're not willing to pay the MSRP price, there's going to be options just like there are for any board game that releases. With that team, keep rolling them, Chris. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.